Hi, my name is Aniara Matthews, or Annie for short. I'm the research services librarian for the Douglas and Henry Regional Academic Centers. I also help plan the outreach events for the libraries. And the outreach event for December will be about grief. We are acknowledging National Grief Awareness Week, which is December 2nd through December 7th. And today I am here with Julie Cannon, who is the Assistant Director for the Counseling Services. Thank you, Julie, for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. Um, my first question is, what is grief and what does that look like? Yes, it looks like a lot of different things. Um, grief is really the emotional and physical and spiritual suffering that we feel when we lose someone or something that's really important to us. Grief, um, when we think about it, is our internal thoughts and feelings um, and the internal meaning that we give to that experience of loss. And mourning is how we express that grief outside of ourselves. Any emotion that you can think of is a natural response to grief. Some folks may feel sad or lonely. Others may feel relief even. And uh, what is some, you know, sorry. Yeah, no, we can, I was just gonna say we can experience grief for a lot of reasons too, losing someone, uh, a loved one, but also um, losing a job or chronic illness, losing a pet. Uh, what are some misconceptions about grief that people may have? Grief is bad, could be one of them. What grief does is even though it can hurt and it can feel bad, it, it's there to help us cope with that loss and come to a place of acceptance that our life has changed. And it also helps our brain adjust to the new reality of life without that loved one. I can remember times uh, with losses I've experienced when especially the person wasn't living with me and I would go to pick up the phone to call them and my brain is still catching up with the reality. So um, another thing is that you should get over grief quickly. I know we get maybe three bereavement days off if we're lucky with our jobs and Grief can take months, even years. It can be a lifelong process. Everyone's grief is different. And to point out just that everyone grieves in different ways. Some people may have a very internal, quiet, private way that they grieve and others, it may be um, more shared with a group. They may be more um, demonstrative in the way that that they mourn. And I would say one of the last things is, is there can be a misconception that the intensity and length of your grief correlates with how much you love the person that you lost. And that's a myth. We all have different trajectories for our grieving. And, um, and so I, I encourage everyone to be open and non-judgmental of others and of ourselves. Um, during the pandemic, lots of people have died. Um, how can students, faculty, and staff here at MRSA find the support that they need if they've been impacted by the pandemic? Uh, yeah. I would, I would say that we all have to recognize that we've been impacted. In other words, it might be hard to help someone that doesn't acknowledge that they need some help and through our own experiences and maybe sharing, we need to have boundaries, but sharing with the people around us, I'm having a tough time. This has really been rough. And just consider reaching out um, when we're having a tough time to somebody who's um, a trusted family member or friend and encouraging our students to utilize the services that are available to them. Whether it's just, you know, a pop in in the office or a little hallway conversation, just letting someone know, hey, I'm here, let me know. Or it could be that we encourage 
students to focus on self-care because the losses and the impact has been really devastating. And so some of the basic things I'm encouraging folks um, about getting sleep and eating healthy and getting some exercise or keeping up with our annual doctor's appointments can be helpful. If we find ourselves um, having a really tough time, always consider therapy. And our students at Henry and Douglas have access to WellConnect, which provides um, some th free counseling sessions and also some information on grief. And um, encouraging folks, I think, just to have dialogue. And I really encourage faculty and staff to model talking about, you know, to the extent that you're comfortable, but acknowledging, hey, I'm having a tough time too. Um, are there any apps that people can use to help them with their grief? There's a lot of apps out there. I really hadn't realized it until we started talking about this. I, you know, I knew about like Headspace and Calm and Insight Timer, which are all great, just relaxation and meditation apps. And I recommend those, but there are a lot of apps specifically for grief work. There's one called AMF app. It's actively moving forward. One called grief support for young people, grief steps for parents. Um, there's one called good grief and they do chat and messaging. Honestly, if you just go online um, or whatever your app provider is and put in you know, grief work or grief care, you'll find a lot. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff online as well. Um, so for those who haven't lost a loved one, how can they support those who have? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good question. First, I would say that um, just because someone has been through a loss doesn't mean that, that they are better qualified if I could say, and necessarily to support someone. I think it depends on, you know, how willing they are to, you know, work with their own grief. But it's a fair question for any of us, um, especially if you haven't been through a loss, we, we can feel intimidated. It's a heavy topic, can be. Um, first, I'd encourage folks just to, um, just to reach out and, most people who are suffering through a loss find it hard to reach out, you know, whether it's, you know, that they've lost a loved one who's died, or maybe they're going through a divorce or a bad breakup, they may not have the energy to reach out. So when you reach out, you may not know what to say, and that's okay. You can say, I don't know what to say, but I just want you to know that I'm, I'm here. I care about you. Doing practical things. I always love doing practical things. And sometimes it's hard if you ask someone, what do you need? They may not be able to say. So, you know, I sometimes I think I'm not a great cook, but I can pull a meal together one way or another. And I may say, hey, can I bring um, dinner over to you Thursday night? You know, I'm, I'm gonna go buy this, I'm gonna go buy Moe's, what do you like? And um, those practical things can mean a lot. Uh, listening instead of advising. So that takes us off the hook at being an expert because even if I'm a grief specialist, I don't know what your internal experience is like. So just saying, hey, um, I would love to hear um, what you're going through and avoid any judgments. Just let your friend set the pace and at some point, they may want to talk about what's happened. And uh, another time, they may just want to have a little, a little time of just sharing a meal or going to see a movie or doing something that's a little bit lighter. Um, but it's a version of sort of holding their hand and just, let's just make it through today. We'll get there. Um, and the last thing I'd offer for anyone who's supporting someone who's going through grief is have self-compassion. That's really hard and sacred work when we're reaching out to someone who has had a loss. 
And also, finally, I'd say set healthy boundaries. I mean, we have to be realistic. Um, most of us can't be on call 24 seven. So I might tell someone, hey, I'm free this weekend, um, anything you need, but don't go beyond um, what we realistically can do. We have to take care of ourselves um, as well. Um, what are some ways that people can healthily cope with loss, like during the day-to-day -day basis? Mm. Finding someone that they can talk to about the death of their loved one or the loss that they're going through can help them avoid becoming isolated. So if we have a friend that can play that role, that's wonderful. If not, I mean, we may have friends that maybe they can make a meal for us, but they're really uncomfortable um, listening to me talk about what I'm going through. Then we might look for a support group. So we might look for a counselor that can be there for us. We might reach out to um, our faith communities or a meetup group and find a place where we can continue just um, doing what we can in our life to move around, um, accepting our feelings and accepting that we'll have a wide range of emotions and they may be very difficult and complicated emotions. Um, and I'll go back again and again to taking care of yourself. Um, keep eating, make sure you're getting enough liquid, um, exercise. Uh, it, it may take all the strength you have just to walk around the block. That's okay. Um, do what you can. And uh, also when you're in that space, uh, reach out and help others who are dealing with loss. That is something you can do either through a support group or um, volunteering um, when you're at the place that you feel like you might do that. Is anxiety a normal part of the grief process? Honestly, Annie, I think anxiety is a normal part of just life in general. Um, it's the number one issue that we see here in, in the CAPS Counseling Center. And so I'll say it's it can be. Um, any emotion that you can think of can be part of the grieving process. Grief can feel paralyzing. Um, we can lose our sense of safety and control. We can have trouble sleeping. And when we have trouble with, with that sleeping or appetite, eating, that can put us at a higher risk for anxiety. So um, if our symptoms of anxiety don't dissipate um, uh, you know, a while after the loss, then you might be experiencing an anxiety disorder. And I wanna be clear that grief is not pathological. Grief is a natural, hard experience that we all go through. And a certain amount of anxiety is also very natural in response to just being in this world. When we talk about anxiety disorder, we're talking about something that is sticking around for a long time and is beginning to uh, interfere with our lives. I mean, we talked about sleep and eating. It may interfere with our ability to work or attend to our own hygiene or um, our schoolwork. We may not be able to focus. So if it lingers, then that's what we might want to consider treatment options. And those can include um, talking to a counselor, a support group. It might include um, medications or a combination of those things. And that, that may be when we call it complicated grief. That's kind of grief that um, is taking a, a long time to really work through in that it's affecting our, our ability to function. And so if you already have an anxiety disorder before the loss, then that can complicate our grief in the same way that complicated grief can trigger anxiety. So the holidays are coming up, but I mean, the holidays, some, sometimes they're not happy for everyone. Um, so what can we do to help those who are having a hard time? 
you have a hard time with like Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and mm. yes um you know you're that's a good reminder right? for me I think for everyone to always consider that folks are going through losses during the holiday time and to give space for that so listening more than we talk is a good place to start acknowledging the loss that you know our friend or our loved one has experienced and express that we care about them we might um, make some accommodation for instance if if we're planning the gathering or we have some part in that Perhaps we could find ways to include that lost loved one in the holidays if, you know, if we or our loved one is comfortable with that, like lighting a candle to acknowledge that person's continued presence in our lives. Um, we could um, talk about the changing roles in our holidays. If, I, if the loved one who is now gone physically um, used to carve the turkey or always light the candle or took part in um, a ritual that's important talking about it and saying hey I'm, I, we're gonna this is gonna be hard how do you think we ought to approach this telling stories I think if I think we have to let the person um, who's going through it set the pace and if they feel like telling stories, ask them, what do you remember about your loved one? You know, what are you gonna hold on to? Um, they, it may feel comforting to them to, let's make that pie that our loved one always made, or, you know, go and, uh, you know, go look at the lights like we always did. Um, it also may be that our friend or loved one may wanna do something completely different. Maybe they want to stay home. Maybe they want to go on a cruise. Um, that's okay. Just offer to support them and and don't push someone, you know, either consciously or even unconsciously to get over it and just be happy for the holidays. They're, they're going to be where they're going to be. And also allow them to be happy um, without assuming they're not still hurting. Grief is sort of like a roller coaster for a lot of us that, We'll have moments where we feel the loss very acutely and we may feel the pain. There may be other moments when we feel fine. We're not thinking of it. We may laugh. So um, I think um, just ask the person what helps and be open to what doesn't. And my last question is, if someone is reluctant to get help, uh, what would you say to encourage them to get um, assistance or help for their grief? Mm -hmm. First of all, I would, I would go back to just offering or encouraging to help them take care of their basic needs, which may be, you know, offering to cook a meal for them or bring over some soup or take them out, um, helping them get out of the house. Maybe we go for a walk around the block or we go to the mall, if there's a mall left to walk or wherever it is a trail that you like to walk. Um, we might uh, invite them to a, a low key event or gathering and let them know it's okay if you need to leave early. Um, in other words, starting with sort of an indirect way of offering support that isn't, um, doesn't require them to acknowledge, hey, I'm having a hard time with this grief. Um, we're, just, we're just being a friend there. Um, and if they're willing to talk about their grief and they're willing to talk about that, yeah, this is hard, offer to go to a support group with them. And uh, there are a lot online. Um, so um, during the pandemic, it's still going on. That's an option. Go with them. At least, you know, to one or two meetings. Um, 
help them find a grief counselor if that will be helpful and offer to maybe drive them to that appointment. Um, although councils are doing a lot of online work too, but offering to be there with them, hey, can I drive you to your first appointment? It's hard to take that first step. It really is. Um, and just remembering that feeling sad is not pathological either. Um, this person we're trying to support, they may need more time than we do. Maybe we have experienced um, the same loss and we may get through it at different paces. So I would say um, that the sadness and grieving and taking more than a minute to get back fully into our lives, that's okay. If we're worried about them, if we feel like their health is declining, or if we feel like um, we're worried that they may be having suicidal thoughts or homicidal thoughts, then um, I would encourage folks to um, reach out for help. And that's the situation where we, we need to find a way to get them to um, get some help. And I can share some crisis numbers and hotline numbers uh, with you, Annie, that you can share with the group that we can use, even if I'm the one, not the one who is struggling with the thoughts of self-harm. Um, it may be my friend or my loved one. I can call these numbers and say, I'm worried about my friend. What can I do? And they can help you out. And um, um, finally, I'd say be honest about your availability and keep your boundaries too. Um, we can't force someone to get help, but we can say, uh, I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. Um, well, that was the last question. Um, thank you so much, Julie, for taking the time out of your day to answer these questions. Um, I really hope this Q&A just provides some encouragement and support. Uh, for everyone at Mercy who is dealing with grief um, during this time. Um, and for more information about counseling services, you can visit counseling.mercer.edu. And for more um, outreach events uh, hosted by the library, you can visit libraries.mercer.edu. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity. I hope everyone takes good care of themselves. Um, and. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the work that you do out at the centers. Thanks. Thank you.